One of the things this morning when Deb led the children uh, in prayer, it all it came to me. I read an article, and I'm going to ask you, who among you have heard of the wide awakes? Well, that was a group of young men during Lincoln's run for president that gathered in many cities, and they, they looked for a name. And somebody said, well, where are the wide awakes? And that's what they were called. But there were thousands of them. They came and they supported Lincoln, and eventually he was elected. elected. But when Deb was telling that to the kids, I thought, you know, every now and then, you know, everything seems to come together a little bit. This message today is kind of like in multiple parts, but it's all trusting in God. Okay, the eclipse. I know many of you, as I did, I gathered with Robert and Ruth Ann and all the little kids, and we watched the eclipse, and we were amazed. Amazed how it could all come together. Sure, in the years coming, we could travel great distances, as people did here, to see the eclipse. But it was amazing, and all the time after that was event happened, I kept thinking about the scripture package passage where the events of the crucifixion and the sky turned dark. So I tried to find out just what had happened during that time. Christian texts mentioned that the moon turned to blood after Jesus' crucifixion, potentially referring to a lunar eclipse. And when that happens, the moon does have a reddish hue. Using this textual source, there's many scholars who have backtracked through historical records and how these eclipses happened, and they decided that a possible date for that was Friday, April 3rd, AD 33. Same time Jesus was crucified. So this made me think. Could this be the event the evangelist spoke of? We are a witness to this event. Can we pass it on to future generations because we figured it out and Lorenzo will be 82 when it comes by again. Most of us won't be here. But these things are passed on. Passed on through Scripture, passed on through the voice of God. And yesterday I listened to a, a podcast from the Lutheran Hour. And this preacher was talking about the Holy Spirit breathing in. And what comes out is our love for Jesus Christ. So we breathed in the spectacle of the eclipse. And then we breathed out and could have related it to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That's as close to anything that all of us would ever see. So when you think of that, breathe in and breathe out. It's much like Deb said with the little kids, give them three pennies, take them in, Deliver them out. That's how we look to the Lord, our Savior, and Jesus Christ as we tell others. And then we can think about Matthew where it says, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun would be darkened and the moon, moon would not give its light. It's a powerful message, one that we relived this past Monday, one that we were a witness to. The other thing I wanted to talk about this morning is uh, after in the scripture today, Jesus said, peace be with you. I wanted to talk about butterflies.
So butterflies, you say, they are amazing little creatures. I never get tired of seeing them in the spring when they go from plant to plant gathering pollen, seemingly not focusing on what they're doing, but then all the time they are focusing. I read where moths used to be plentiful at night. Now you see them more in the day. Well, some really smart scientists have figured out that moths have the ability to hear, which I found to be phenomenal. But then what else they have the ability to do? They can send out a signal that interrupts the sonar that the bats have to find them. And so it was an escape mechanism. And then as they evolved and went to the daylight, they become beautiful butterflies. Much like we are. We evolve every day of our lives and become a firmer and better Christian. And when I was thinking of these moths that send out this signal to block the sonar, what do we send out to block the thoughts and the signals that come in from the devil? What, what do we have in our arsenal that interrupts our thought process, that interrupts when we're studying so we don't have to listen to the senseless chatter that comes at us? Remember a while back we were studying the screw tape letters. How the head chief tried to get Wormwood to convince this man to be part of the devil's arsenal, but he was unable to do that. So what do we do when we hear messages? Are we tapping messages where we are going after church? Or are we listening to where God would lead us? And think about where he is leading you today. What kinds of ministry can we be involved in? There is more ministry that happens in this church than many others. There's always something going on, something that needs your help, something that needs you to be convinced that Jesus Christ is Lord and then carry it out. I have a great difficulty of remembering names when I first meet any of you. It takes me a long time. I'm gaining on it, but it takes me a long time. I'm always reminded of my, my friend Brian. His grandfather used to come up to him, and they belonged to a sizable church. But anyway, he would come up to Brian, and he'd have two people right behind him, or one or whatever. But he would tell Brian, he says, Brian, I want you to meet my two new best friends. And then he would turn to them and say, what was your names again? You know, that's like me. You tell me your name in a minute, 20 seconds later, I can't remember it. I'm trying to do better, but it takes time to do that. So we need to think like the moths that are out there and send out signals so that the thoughts of Jesus does not tempt us and come into our lives. I read that butterflies evolved from moths into these beautiful colors they have. Some only live two to four weeks. They all live in the now, present, as they go about their duties to pollinate things. Two to four weeks. Many butterflies, such as the monarchs, which is up here, I think, migrate for a long distance. And then what's amazing, these migrations take place over many generations. So whoever started is not the one that finishes. When I was thinking about that, I thought of the recent trip when I drove to Texas. What would that have been like after the first day I had got out of my car and someone else had got in and just knew exactly where to go? Then after the second day, they would stop, and then a third person would get in there. 
It's kind of like what these butterflies do. The Lord has gifted them and the generations with this instinct that says they missed, must go where they are going to do to regenerate. Butterflies are many colors, some for protection, some for attraction. It's one of the mysteries that in this unfolding world that we know. And as I said, little children live in the now. I often think of that of my great grandchildren. They know when I'm there and I'm gone, I'm gone. And then I'll come back on another day. And, oh, oh. <laughs> you know? So they live in the now. What they are currently doing. The mere presence of butterflies has always given me a feeling of peace. Colorful as they flutter from one place to another. A peace and a feeling of joy to see one more part of God's creation that comes to life where we can enjoy it. And then remember on the, from the gospel, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, when the door was locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came among them and said, peace be with you. What calming words, peace. Calming words that the New Testament uses Peace in at least three different ways. One is a spiritual peace, that a peace with God. One is a relational peace, peace with others, with, as we make the sign of the peace and talk to one another. It's that relation we have with one another. And the other is emotional, peace with ourselves. According to the Bible, spiritual peace or the peace of God and you've heard this many times, it surpasses all understanding. Is the calmness experienced in the body and the mind and the spirit while trusting in God's divine power and grace in all kinds of circumstances. Peace gives us that calming effect, connects us one for one another. Relational peace is recognition and trust, fellowship, friendship. That's what we are in this congregation and other places we gather. And then the last emotional piece is a state of being calm and at ease. Even in the face of difficult or challenging situations, we can feel peace. It's a feeling of contentment and satisfaction with one's life. We bring this calming peace to one another. I know that the countless people that I have visited in the hospital, it's the presence of God that brings peace to them. Sometimes I say a lot of words, but usually I let them speak and remind them that at peace with God. Sometimes I tell people, and Ruth Ann was here at the early service, and she knows full well that my mind works in mysterious ways. And she'll look at me sometimes and she'll say, Pop, where did that come from? Well, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I think the good Lord put that thought in there, and I was just trying to help him out. You know? <laughs> Peace, relationship with one another. I have another little story to share about my confirmation past, pastor in 1957. His name was Pastor Woodrow Wilson. Powerful preacher and a good man. But the town I grew up in had two streets that ran east and west on both sides of the street. That's where all of the businesses were. He would come through town sometimes and he would greet people on the street and he would ask them, well, how is it with you and the Lord today? Now, some people would answer. Others would grumble a little bit. 
Still others would see him coming and duck into a store or cross the street. They didn't want to confront him. Well, eventually, the sad to say, the church council gathered around, and don't forget the era this was. Things have changed. And they talked to him, and they said, Pastor, we want you to keep this God talk in the church. It doesn't belong out in the community. They'll have to figure it out. And so that upset him to no end, and I was never quite sure if he resigned or if the church council sent him on his way. I never heard that as a youth. But I do know in the years past that, he lived in Lincoln, Nebraska, and in my frequent trips to, from Texas to South Dakota to see my mother, we would always stop and see Pastor Wilson. He was always a gracious host. And so I know that everything was right with the Lord with him. Peace. Peace is something that we all need. We all enjoy. One of the things that over the years I've, I've got this tattered book of prayers and thoughts. I've carried this. It's a diary of private prayer by John Bailey written in 1949, I've carried this uh, to many overseas locations, used it and prayed with it. And so it's set up a little different. There's a prayer for every day, morning and night of the week. It's not by date. It's like the first day to the 31st day. So if you get to the 28th in February, you go back to the 1st for March. But for this day, I wanted to share with you because it, First of all, he says, today, O oh Lord, let me put right before interest. Let me put others before self. Let me put the things of the spirit before the things of the body. Let me put the attainment of noble ends before the enjoyment and present pleasures. Let me put principle ahead of reputation and then let me put thee, O Lord, ahead of anything else. That was the morning. And in the evening he said, Give me open hands, O God, hands ready to share with all who are in want the blessings which you have enriched my life. Deliver me from all meanness and miserliness. Let me hold my money and stewardship and all my worldly goods in trust for you, to whom now belongs all honor and glory. Amen.